Genesis 1 verse 6. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Interpreters have struggled in explaining this initial firmament. Firmament is not a word we commonly use today, but this word can also be interpreted as expanse. It's the divider of the waters of the earth and the waters suspended in the sky. It could be this firmament or expanse is simply an explanation of the atmosphere or sky between the clouds and the oceans. But it's telling. There is a Hebrew word for clouds and Moses, under the inspiration of the Spirit, chooses not to use this Hebrew word for clouds. Additionally, the Hebrew word suggests the firmament is a solid surface, a flat support base. It seems likely the initial waters above the firmament were not simply clouds, but literally a suspended ocean in the sky. Forgetting the hydrology of the earth as we know it today, when you read the text without bias, it appears to talk about two bodies of water under and over the firmament or expanse and makes no mention of a lesser or greater body of water. I'm sure if you'd arrived in orbit in a spaceship at this point, you'd not recognise the planet as Earth. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. No mention is made of how far the firmamental heaven extended above the earth. We can only speculate. But this heaven is the first heaven. The waters above the firmament are the very waters which fell in Noah's day and helped to flood the earth along with the waters from the fountains of the great deep. Likely, God broke the firmamental layer he described in Noah's day. Torrential rain bucketed down all over the planet as the waters above the firmament emptied over a 40-day period. And we come to the conclusion of the second evening and morning cycle. This is the only day of the six creative days he doesn't declare as good. I'm almost certain there's a reason he doesn't make this declaration on day two. This isn't an accidental omission. But I haven't heard an explanation I'm comfortable with, so I'm going to leave the subject for others to speculate on. In this Genesis account, Moses doesn't bother with apologetics. He doesn't bother trying to justify God or prove God. The existence of God is assumed. It's accepted. It's believed almost universally by all the Hebrews of his day, all those early readers of this account. Sadly, in the West, most scoff at Genesis 1, regarding it as an outdated, ignorant, but quaint tale. Most people in Australia live as if there is no God. They may not be atheists, but they live as if the God of the Bible does not truly exist. The last thing Christians today should be doing is compromising when it comes to this origin account. We need to boldly share the word of God. We need to boldly share the plan of God's salvation to the world. We need to boldly declare the whole counsel of God. That means we need to teach and share Genesis to Revelation. The Bible is a book we can trust from the first chapter to the last. But sadly in Australia, most Christians do not believe and trust the words of Genesis 1. Or most of what is written in the final book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And if most Christians doubt the Bible, why should we expect those in the world to accept its teachings? The closer we get to the coming of our Lord, the more we need a strong foundation in the inerrant Word of God. The times of deception are coming. The time of the great apostasy is close. It may already have commenced. If you're a believer, I commend you to trust totally in the Word of God. Remember what Jesus said 
when he referenced this early Genesis account. But from the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. Jesus believed God made Adam and Eve at the very beginning point of creation. Adam and Eve were not a billions of years later afterthought. They were there at the very beginning, the first week of creation. I exhort believers, believe the Bible, believe Genesis 1, believe the teachings of Jesus.